All right, what is up guys? Couldn't really figure out a video that was uh, mechanically related uh, for today. So I was talking to my friend Kat and she was like, why don't you try and do a Q and A? And uh, here we are, we're gonna do a Q and A. I asked on um, Instagram and YouTube and I got some pretty good questions. So we'll start out with the first one here. Um, also for this video, shout out to anybody uh, that actually asked a question. I appreciate you. Some of them were funny. A lot of these are some really actually good questions. The one dude asked like five questions. So I'll save that long one uh, for the last one because it's, it's pretty into it. Um, but also if you're like, think of watching this at a different time, you can just like alt tab and play a video game while you listen to this or in the car or something. You're not gonna actually see anything crazy, but <coughs> We'll get started here. DSVet7R asks, what's your story? Where did you grow up? And how did you get into Volkswagens? Well, I don't have much of a story behind myself, but I grew up in Waynesboro, Pennsylvania, which is near Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. And really I'm on like the border of Maryland, uh, where I'm from in Pennsylvania. So we went to Maryland a lot, up in the mountains and stuff like that. Um, Waynesboro, small town, smaller than the town I live in now. Uh, one high school, like one police station. <laughs> like there wasn't at all the Waynesboro people watching this. It's weird. Once you get out of Waynesboro, it's it's quite different living, for sure. Uh, it's a smallish town, but that's where I'm from. It's a lot of a lot of drugs there now. A lot of bad drugs there now, but. Uh, how did I get into V-dubs? Well, let's see. My first car was a Dodge Durango. And I wound up putting that into a tree. Totaled that baby out. And then uh, I actually uh, worked for one of my dad's friends uh, detailing cars and stuff at a uh, buy here, pay here car place. And I wound up uh, test driving a Jetta there. It was a manual. It was a, like a 99.5 VR6. It was like the dark blue, brown interior. Uh, I think it was five speed, maybe it was six, I don't remember. But uh, I wound up test driving that with a buddy. I didn't even know how to drive a clutch at the time. So my buddy TJ actually was test driving it for me basically. And he's the one that initially taught me how to drive a stick, so shout out to TJ. But I also had a friend that had, well his brother had a Mark III with a VR6 and they all like hyped up the VR6 motor like it was some crazy fast NA motor. I didn't know shit about cars back then, mind you, but um, after hearing about that and going for this test drive, my buddy DJ ripping on it for me a little bit, I was sold. I wound up buying it. It was like 5,500 bucks. Um, had that for a long time. I wound up burning the clutch out of that thing. I broke the dog bone out at one point and the motor swung back and the oil pan hit the the subframe, I guess, put a crack in the oil pan. That car has so many electrical problems. We wound up, I, at one point I put on a underglow in the car and then we went to drill to put the box, like right at the rain tray, and we wound up drilling into the main wiring harness. And I'm like, I wound up paying like 1100 bucks out of pocket to get a new wiring harness put in that thing. It was, it was terrible. I mean, that was back in like 2011. I've learned a lot since then. And definitely not to drill anywhere near where the ECU sits. I had no idea the ECU sat in the rain tray. So, man, good times. And then, well, eventually I found out about the R32 when I had my Jetta and I was like, I absolutely need to have this car. And I wound up finding an R32 here. Um, and it just went from there. I wound up supercharging that, doing all types of things. And then I hydrolocked that car parted it out, made a bunch of money off that from insurance and parting it out and then that's how I got my Mark 7. It's been like a nice, I've had like a couple other, I've had like a different, a 2 liter Jetta, we had a, an A6, uh, Mark 5, uh, GTI, what else? I think that's it for my Volkswagen. Uh, Matthew Money, he asked, do I miss my R32? Heck yes, I miss my R32 every day. Uh, the sound of the Wookiee is just, you can't beat that. That is like the best sounding car in my opinion for like, it's price range at least. It is uh, very, very good. And I miss how stiff that car was, how direct it was. Obviously the way it sounded, it was two door, I had a sunroof. Um, I mean, everything from the back seats were out. I had 
you know, the battery and the trunk. I had, you know, obviously the supercharger and the bigger injectors and all this stuff. I definitely missed it. And the Euro headlights on that thing were freaking beautiful. Um, yeah, I definitely missed that car. The RPF ones on it. Definitely miss it. Um, Mike asks, <laughs> when does the EQT Vortex arrive? Man, I wish I knew. I'm coming up on 90 days since I ordered this goddamn turbo. I'm starting to get a little upset. Um, a little is an understatement. <laughs> uh, Frank Mabo, he keeps talking about just switching it up and getting his M M560 turbo. So we'll see if this Vortex takes too much longer. I might, I might just have to switch to somebody else. My boy Saul, uh, when are you going to join Team Defiance, Clovis? Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll just apply. Um, I don't know. Maybe I will. I just, I'm not a fan of windshield banners or any of that. So, I mean, I just need like a regular old sticker to put on the car. I don't, I don't do the banner thing across the windshield at the bottom. But um, I guess I'll send you a message here after this. <laughs> My boy Philly, he asked, why didn't Jesse's car have front brakes in Fast and Furious? Because they messed up. <laughs> Hardcore. I can't believe when uh, all those videos and posts came out about them not having calipers. What were they thinking? I mean, I know it was kind of like a low budget thing. They didn't plan on being as big as they are today, but to not have <laughs> calipers on the front of the car, it's pretty rough. It's pretty rough. His girlfriend actually asked a question too. Lupita, what wheels should we put on the car later on? They also have a, uh, the black Golf R that you see on the channel. Um, I don't know, RPF ones are always great. Uh, the Koenigs that I have are nice and light and a lot cheaper. Um, I really like Titan wheels though. Titan makes some really, really, really hot wheels for the Mark 7. Um, I'll have to take a screenshot Send it to you guys. Felicia the Dolphin. What is the best mod you've done to the R to improve handling? Um, it's kind of hard for me to answer. Uh, I think the best for the cost would be the Euro Code front strut brace. Um, you get the front and rear together for like 190 or somewhere around there. I think that was like the, the most like you bolt it on, it doesn't take long, you bolt it on, you go drive, you feel the difference right away, you're like hyped as hell about it. Um, other than that, I think the best handling mod would be coilovers, um, especially coilovers like VCs that come with camber plates, uh, being able to lower the car, stiffen the car up, add camber, which increases, you know, turn and feel and all that, and knock that all out at the same time. You can get these coilovers for like, a little under or just around a thousand bucks during Black Friday and you can spec them out a um, hundred thousand different ways you can rebuild them down the road um, to whatever spec that you maybe wanted to that's eventually what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go uh, at least with some stiffer springs and maybe uh, some different rebound stuff in the future but uh, that's after the next month which uh, Bring me to the next question. Uh, basically, what's what's next for the car? Um, after this turbo comes and gets installed, uh, we are working on brakes. Frank Mabo just came out with a set of brakes along, or front brakes with Prodigy Works. They're 304 millimeter, four piston, super lightweight brakes. Um, so I'll be snagging those along with the RS3, uh, what are they called? I guess deflectors, they, I guess I think they go on your control arms and they help bring air to the back of the, the rotor to help keep them cool. It'll be, so it'll be the calipers, the rotors, the pads, the lines, the deflectors, and then um, I'm gonna try and like get some, some routing from the front of the car to help bring air to the brakes uh, along with the control arms, um, the rear, what are they called? rear trailing arms, the bushings, and uh, ECS makes a stiffening kit for that. So that'll be there. Um, over the winter, I'd like to do a build head. I'd like to do mild aero. I'd like to do like a, a legit chassis mounted um, front splitter. Uh, I'd like to get, I don't know how 
one way or another get some maybe sheet metal or light aluminum or something to get under the car to help flatten it out aerodynamically that way and I'd like to get like an actual functioning diffuser maybe even change up exhaust setups just do like a, a dual center exit with a real nice diffuser um, nothing like crazy big or hey look at me I fucking have a big diffuser type of thing I just want a functional like functional arrow on the car I want the, the bottom of the car to be smooth I want a nice cutout to be able to drain my oil and uh, and obviously be able to like be removed semi easily if there needs to be maintenance under the car but um, yeah and a belt head over the winter along with that arrow stuff would be legit uh, that is like my close end goal for the car um, definitely want everything that has to do with braking done and then uh, control arms and trailing arms with the braces I want all that done by winter and then winter would be aero built head um, and then I don't know after that probably I know I feel like if I have the money to do a built head like I plan to over the winter then I'm all just gonna wind up building the motor and then come springtime we'll just crank it up and see what we make I don't know we'll see we'll see how do you think you'd compare with the exact setup with the DSG when is your dyno date you should post the difference between 91 or 93 whatever you you have and full E85 on the dyno and the quarter mile. No one with an MQB platform running MPI has done it. Well, brother, I'm gonna do it. I already planned on doing it, it's gonna happen. Once this turbo gets here, I'm gonna put the car on the dyno as is and then go to the drag strip. Um, we'll have a number and a time. And then I'll go back to the dyno on 91 with the EQT, do the same thing, uh, get a number, run a time, and then I'll go back again with like an E50, get a dyno, get a ton. Um, I don't, it's definitely not going to be in the same video. <coughs> this will be probably over the course of like a month, month and a half. Um, maybe I'll make like a compilation video at the end of that where you can see the dynos on uh, stock turbo 91, EQT or whatever turbo I have, 91, and then the same turbo on E85 and then or the drag strip, hopefully not break an axle or anything major uh, again. And then I'll just do a video that has all those. It'll be separate videos as they come out and then I'll make one at the end just to show. I don't really ever plan on going full E85 because to me, I don't know. I don't really want to deal with all that. I don't, I like with the 450 pump, I should probably have a torque bite to be running full E85 to get the most out of the pump uh, being a new controller that can actually give it the proper amperage and voltage and all that nerdy stuff that I don't really know about but I know most people that are running full E85 with MPI on a bigger pump bigger turbo trying to run full 85 need the torque bite that's an expensive part um, I don't even have E85 locally E85 is like 110 miles away over in Texas I do have friends that only run on E85 in town and they get barrels of it but it's like for me to go bug a buddy to get some of his ethanol every, you know, half a week to be filling up on this and that. No, I just, I'll have a nice kill file for E50 um, that I'll run on like money run kind of nights or something. But other than that, I'll probably just stick with, with 91 for the most part, unless we do get a pump here, um, which would be sick. But I don't see us getting an E85 pump anytime soon. No, I will definitely be doing this stuff. Trust me. If, they, if this turbo would have showed up by now, you guys would have hella more content and I'd be like kicking my own ass to get to the drag strip immediately. But with it taking, like I said, it's been almost nine, 90 days. Today's the 16th. So what? Six more days. It'll be 90 days since I ordered that turbo. So yeah. And for the last questions, from Scotch Egg, shout out to this guy, he's always commenting on my shit. Uh, number one, how much have you spent on mods? Well, buddy, um, I haven't kept track, but I can tell you it's well over $10,000. I'm probably close to like 13 or so. I've had some, I guess 15 minutes is the cutout for 
I just, I just been talking this whole time. Like I said, maybe like 14,000, 13,000. I don't know. I've put a lot of freaking money in this car, but you can see here, like this is my mod list and it just goes and goes and goes. And this doesn't count things that's broken and oil changes and tires and all that stuff over the years. So I put quite a bit. I put almost enough money into the car to have the car paid off right now. So it's kind of embarrassing in a way, but uh, a lot of money, especially in even like tuning and all this, it's, it's been, it's been a long road. Maybe I'll, one day I'll actually like tally it up mod for mod um, and not include oil changes or tires or any of that, just like as it sits. But it, I feel like I would be a little embarrassed to see that number and kick myself in the butt, but I'm just gonna wind up spending more money anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Or this dude asked five questions, so that was number one. Uh, number two, if you didn't autocross your car, would you still have done all your mods? Um, yes, not all of them. I probably wouldn't have done coilovers. I probably wouldn't have done the, um, what's it called, the Tyrol Sport subframe stuff and the uh, Euro Sport braces. But other than that, I probably would have done everything else, power related, reliability related, um, the tuning and stuff. I probably would have done just about everything. But for drag race, like, I mean, you don't really need cold overs to drag race. I mean, the stock suspension or just springs would have, been, would have been just fine. But I think just about everything else I would have done, for sure. Uh, number three, best mod. Uh, I think the best overall mod for your money is probably a tune. It changes the, the way the car drives, the way the car reacts, you get more power, potentially better gas mileage, potentially um, uh, less of a higher oil temp. Um, I think, I mean, it's not really even a mod, it's a flash, is a mod? I mean, it is a mod to put on your mod list, but it's not something you're like actually doing. You're having somebody else just flash some software. I think a tune really is, I mean, especially if you're getting custom tuned, like I have, you can have your tuner put in like little, you know, little things that you like or take out things you don't like. I think that's a pretty big thing. Uh, other than that, probably like, like a, a hard part, my favorite hard part for a mod uh, was probably like for actually like driving, driving would have been the Diesel Geek Short Shifter and the Diesel Geek Super Pin. Uh, being a manual guy, it really, it's literally like Viagra for your car. If you ever touch the sock shifter, the 6MT shifter on one of these, and then feel on with the Diesel Geek stuff, um, it's huge. It's way different. Uh, other than those, probably, like I said, the Euro Code. That Euro Code front strut brace is literally the bee's knees. That's one of my favorite, favorite, like, uh, handling mods. My favorite dr driving, just driving mods was probably... Uh, the Diesel Geek stuff and switching to 17s because the car just feels so much better with more meat on the ground. Uh, fourth question. Most expensive pointless mod I think was the CTS turbo pipes. I got them used and first off the fitment sucks. Um, they're way bigger for no reason. They hit my intake. Uh, they don't boat up like factory. Um, they don't look very good and I feel like they didn't do shit for the car. Um, Maybe like if you went big turbo and then and still had the stock pipes and then switched them out to some bigger ones, maybe you'd feel a difference. But to me, um, I feel like that was the only mod really that was a waste of money. Um, I mean, you got the, the turbo muffler lead and the turbo 90, but I did those such a long time ago. And I feel like back then every little mod made a difference. Maybe because I wasn't tuned yet. Like every little bit that helped throttle response was like, ooh, it was worth the money. But... If I had to, to pick one out off the top of my head, it would be the, the, the piping going from the turbo to the intercooler. I think that was just a total waste. And it made the fitment of my intake terrible now. It doesn't sit right. Um, any thoughts on upgrading to an RS3? Absolutely freaking not. Um, I am not a fan of four doors. I'm not really much of a fan of sedans. Um, now that five cylinder though, Absolutely. If I were to get 
into a newer car. The only newer car that I would spend my money on would be a TTRS. I love two doors. I love the way the new TTRS looks, sounds. It's got the start button on the steering wheel. It has no like infotainment off to the side here, which I really like. Like everything is in the digital dash, everything. The only thing over here is like some buttons for your AC and like your vents. There's no other distracting screen. Um, there's like no room behind you, which I really like. I like smaller, like my roommate has Miata. I love that. I love the feel of getting in. You got two seats, nothing but your, your, you know, your gauges, the shit right in front of you is the only thing you need to look at. Um, just, I can only imagine how nimble they are. And in that Nardo gray with the carbon package is just so freaking beautiful. And they just, they just look like a mini R8. And R8 is one of my favorite cars. Um, in terms of looks at least. And I would get like the V10 Plus or whatever, not the Spider because they're kind of ugly, but I've always had a huge boner for the R8. And after the Mark III TTRS came out, um, that would be that would be the one. But I think for me, when I go, do go to buy another car, what I've been looking at, I want something obviously German, something obviously not just German, but Volkswagen or Audi. Um, but I also want to be able to tow this car if need be, if it ever gets to the point where it's not really uh, a daily kind of car anymore. I want something that would be able to tow it. Uh, I've been looking into SQ5s and SQ7s. Um, so maybe after this car is paid off, after this appointment, it would be like late next year, maybe I'll get myself into like an SQ5, throw that bitch on bags with some like 20s on it. Um, that dude in blue actually has like a really cool review on a black one with gold wheels. Um, just look up, type in the SQ5 stance on Google and those things are so gorgeous. Change the bumpers around a little bit um, and they're just awesome. They're freaking gorgeous cars. Um, I think that would be my next purchase. That or like another Mark IV R32 or like a Mark IV GLI in blue or a Mark IV 20th ed just edition in jazz blue. Is that what's called? Jazz blue? It's like that baby blue looking thing. Um, those would be like my four options. But I really want something that would be able to tow this car if need be. I wouldn't just like trailer it to have a ride across the vent just because I can. No, I would like once this car gets to the point, you know, if I do get a built motor and a built head and you know, all this shit down the road. If I was going to say like Oklahoma or up to Denver or over to Arizona to race, you know, I'd just trailer it out there just in case something were to break, you know. But uh, that's all I got. Huge shout out to everybody that asked questions. I know there's going to be more questions asked after I made this video, but um, I got to get to editing. It's almost 11. This video is supposed to be up at noon. Um, got a lot of random shit to cut out here too. So uh, appreciate you guys staying to the end. You guys are the real MVPs. I got autocross this weekend, autocross next weekend, and then a, there was a huge, huge street racing event. I'm not saying where, but the, the first of the month um, around there, there's going to be some shit going down, and I'm excited. So the next three weekends, you guys will have some awesome shit to see. Uh, this weekend's Amarillo, next weekend's Roswell. Like I said, the third weekend, I'm not giving that away. You guys will see when the time comes, but hopefully um, by the end of those three weeks, Turbo will be here. Uh, Frank is still like tuning out in Florida for like two more weeks, so I wouldn't be able to do much with it. Anyway, while well, he's busy doing tunes in person, but yeah, that's all I got. So, thanks for watching, catch you on the flip flop.